say one more time to go ahead like share and subscribe click the notification bell yes of course right over here so that once we are on you will receive a notice that we are on also to share the link with everyone in your contact list to make sure that the word of god is spread both near and far in your heart and also my brothers and sisters in your Samaria in your Judea and to the uttermost parts of the earth that is what the Lord has called us as believers to do so we are going to thank God today for this word we're going to thank God for the fellowship that we will have I'm anticipating a powerful message glory be to God I will be bringing the word to you today and I know that the anointing is here to bring you can set the captives free so I am preparing myself I am making myself a available will you make yourself available to receive the word let us pray dear god and our father we thank you one more time oh god for this opportunity god to come together in fellowship oh god to magnify you and to exalt you and god almighty to let your word germinate in our hearts we pray mighty god for those who are going to be hearing the word today lord i pray that god that you will Touch their hearts, the very recesses of their hearts. Bring them to a consciousness that you are Lord Supreme and that God that you need. Oh, God Almighty, their hearts. You need their souls. And God Almighty, that everything that we give to you, you give it back to us. One writer says, what shall we render for all of your love and your benefits towards us? Well, dear Father, we are thankful for the opportunity today to hear the word. God Almighty, and because we can hear the word, then there's hope. And once there is hope, then Lord God, we have a bright future. So, Father, thank you one more time. As God, we are careful to give you the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Glory be to God, my brothers and sisters. I'll be reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 15. And I will read to your hearing. And it goes like this, my brothers and sisters. Then came Jesus, Jesus, then came to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do your disciples transgress? the traditions of the elders for they wash not their hands when they eat bread but he answered and said unto them why do ye transgress the commandments of God by your traditions for God commanded saying honor thy father and thy mother and he cursed father or mother let him die the death but ye say Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift. By whosoever thou mayest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your traditions, ye hypocrites. Well, it says, Prophets prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goes into the mouth defile a man, but which comes out of the mouth that defile it a man. Glory be to God. And so, my brothers and sisters, today my topic would simply be this. What defile it a man? Let me say that again. What defile it a man? You know, as I, as I grew up, I, I, I look at the word defile as, the, the, as something that causes you not to be clean anymore. Not to be of any use anymore. You know, when, we, when, when I remember when I was younger and when um, my, my, my grandfather, who was a butcher, he used to have a butcher shop and so they would kill goats and, and cows and you name it, all sorts of animals and pigs. And so when they killed the animals, my brothers and sisters, there was a time when they would now begin to cut the meat up. But what I recognized with my grandfather, he was a very clean individual. So every time that he cut something, he would have a piece of cloth and he would wipe the knife. And I would ask my granddad, granddad, why do you wipe the knife every time you cut something? He says, grandson, because I do not want to defile the knife. So I'm saying defile the knife. He says, yes, 
Yes, because once you have blood, oh glory be to God, and blood drains, our blood spills on the ground, our blood flashes somewhere, that part gets defiled. Oh glory be to God, and therefore when I use the knife to cut the meat, every time I cut, I want to be sure that the meat that I'm cutting, the meat that I'm going to be giving someone, the meat that someone is coming for, is going to be clean. It is not defiled. Oh glory be to God, I want to tell you my friends, that we need to understand that the Bible declares to us, according to, hallelujah, Matthew chapter 15, that the scribes and the Pharisees came to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And they said to him, Jesus, I, we are watching your disciples and we recognize that your disciples, whenever they come to eat with us, they do not wash their hands. Oh, glory be to God. Maybe I would be saying to them in this day and era, oh, glory be to God, you must wash your hands because I am saying possibly I don't know where their hands are coming from. Maybe one of them went to the bathroom. Maybe one of them, hallelujah, shook a leper's hand. Maybe one of them, my brothers and sisters, was just dealing with something. They had shaken maybe four or five hands before they got inside. And they came inside and they did not wash their hands. We would have said to them too that your hands are filthy. Oh, glory be to God. But what I want us to understand is that the word of God says, oh, glory be to God in comparison. Oh, glory be to God to the righteousness of God. Our righteousness. That's what Jesus was saying to them the things that you are calling clean are unclean and what you should understand oh glory be to God is that your traditions are unclean let me explain the reason why Jesus said that the traditions were unclean one of the things that we must understand is that traditions are against God's principles oh let me say that again traditions are man-made rules man-made regulations man-made things and man-made statues that, oh, glory be to God, sometimes, my friend, does not line up with the word of God. Oh, hallelujah, some people will be saying, but preacher, all of these years we have had some traditions and they have worked for us. But what I want to ask you, my friend, those of you listening to me on the World Wide Web, is that tradition against the principles of God. I want to draw something to you and look at the attention of what Jesus said. Jesus said to them, the scribe and the Pharisees, he would did not only talk to the scribes and the Pharisees, but he brought the multitudes to him because he had to clarify things. Oh, glory be to God. What am I saying? Is that my brothers and sisters, once some things, hallelujah, like traditions, oh, glory to God, does not line up with the word of God, that the principles and the concepts in God's word are far away from these things, then we are drawing human beings away from God. Oh, somebody magnify the Lord with me and say, hallelujah, what defileth a man? My God, you have some individuals out there who would say, my brothers and sisters, oh, hallelujah, that what you eat defiles you. But can I tell you something? I love to read my Bible and I love to read the red words. You know what the red words mean? The red words mean that it is Jesus saying it. Oh, glory be to God, when Jesus says something, I pay close attention to what he says. Because when Jesus says things, he wants to clarify things. As a matter of fact, I want to tell somebody something. Let me get a little closer to you. Oh, glory be to God. When Jesus says things, my friends, it is not because, glory be to God, he wants to condemn anything. It's not because he wants to change anything. It's because he wants to fulfill things. What does that mean, my friends? It means, according to the word of God, Jesus says, I come not to change anything, but I come to fulfill the scriptures. I come to fulfill the prophecies. I come to fulfill what my father has said from the beginning until now. Nothing has changed. So what Jesus was saying to them was that, hey, listen me man, some of your traditions, some of the things that you have as as rules and regulations they are not according to the principles and the statutes of God they do not line up with the word of God they are holding people hostage Jesus said to them listen man let, let me read it for you carefully 
Jesus says, but he answered and said unto them, why do ye also transgress the commandments of God? Let's pause there. What were the commandments of God? Oh, hallelujah. I believe, my brothers and sisters, that we would look on the commandments as thou shall not. Oh, glory be to God. I want to tell you something. There are some people, oh, glory be to God Almighty, they don't like to hear thou shall not because they say, that we are giving them rules and we're giving them regulations but that's not rules and that's not regulation that are these are, those are commandments what that means is that God has placed things in our lives to guide us oh glory be to God to allow us to walk on the right path my God I feel the presence of God in this place oh glory be to God when God says I command you it means that you are going to take Take these things and these things are going to lead you down the right pathway. It's going to keep you on the right track. It's going to keep you in righteousness. It's going to keep you in holiness. Oh, glory be to God. I remember once upon a time in church, there were a group of individuals who were complaining. They turned to the pastor and they said, Pastor, everything you said, thou shall not, thou shall not. My pastor said to them, well, if you are going to argue with someone argue with God because that's what God says his word says thou shall not kill his word said thou shall not covet his word said thou shall not have any other gods before me his word says hallelujah thou shall not do this and thou shall not do that so my God almighty pastor said to them I cannot tell you to do this but I can say thou shall not Jesus Christ himself looked at the Pharisees and the Sadducees and he said to them oh look at this and the scribes rather not the Sadducees the Pharisees and the scribes Jesus said to them you have taken your traditions you have placed hallelujah men's orders before the commandments of God I know that some of you are looking at me and you're wondering my God almighty what is he talking about well I can tell you oh glory be to God of a woman oh hallelujah this one is one of the best one that I've ever heard. Yeah, I was told of the story. Oh, glory. Oh, hallelujah. That a woman, oh, hallelujah, wanted to teach her daughters how to cook. And so it was Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving dinner. One of these dinners was about to be placed, hallelujah, hallelujah, on the menu. And so they went into the kitchen and they said to her, Mama, can you teach us how to do this thing? Mama says, all right, here we go. Get the turkey and get the pan. Oh, hallelujah. And so the, the girls got the turkey and they got the pan. And so Mama says, take the knife and cut off that part of the turkey. So one of the girls said to her, Mama, why is it that we are cutting off that part of the turkey? That seems to be one of the best part. That seems to be the part, Mama, that has the oil that will keep the turkey moist as it stays in the oven. I don't know if this girl went to culinary school, but she was saying, Mama, I believe that what you're cutting off is the best part. Mama says, no, I have to cut it off because my grandmother cut it off. My mother cut it off. Her mother cut it off. That's the way they taught us how to cook the turkey. So the young lady said, Mama, with all due respect, can you give me just a minute? She ran into the back room. Her grandmother was in the back room. So she went to her and said, Grandma, can I ask you a question? Do not get upset with me. I just want an answer. She said, Grandma, can I ask you, why is it that you cut off the end of the turkey? Grandma turned around, looked at her and said, you know, the reason why we cut it off was that my mother cut it off and her mother cut it off. But hallelujah, she said, hallelujah, my mother, hallelujah, told me once upon a time, I asked her the same question and my mother says the only reason why she cut it off was that the pan was too small and the turkey was too large. Is there somebody who's getting what I'm saying? You see, sometimes, my friends,
trends. Oh, glory be to God. We follow some things called traditions. We follow some things because we see others doing it. We follow things because it sounds good. Oh, glory be to God. So this, this, this family was constantly cutting off a part of the turkey that they did not have to cut off. They were following traditions. Oh, glory be to God because someone else did it. They did not ask why they do it. They did not know why they did it. But they were just following. Oh, glory be to God. Can I tell somebody, my brothers and sisters, that many traditions, hallelujah, are going to lead some of us to hell and lead us away from God because it is not lining up with the word. Tradition, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah, resorts, resorts uh, to religion. Religion means, my brothers and sisters, that men have placed themselves uh, in the position of God. And so, my friends, once they do that, they become, hallelujah, gods. Oh, glory be to God. And they start to lay down rules and regulations. I remember once upon a time, Oh, glory be to God. Another man, hallelujah. My God, I feel the presence of God, man. What defile it a man? It is traditions. There was another little man. Oh, glory be to God Almighty. Oh, hallelujah, who used to only read a certain part of the Bible. And so he made up his own traditions. And so, my friends, when things came around, oh, glory be to God, he had certain ways and rules in his home. Oh, glory be to God Almighty. And so, my friends, one, day it came to the point glory be to God when God was minister, ministering to him and he could not take it anymore he said Lord God Almighty I surrender all you see many of us in order for us to give up our traditions in order to give up the things that we believe that does not pertain to the word of God we have to surrender all to God we have to surrender our minds let the mind which was in Christ Jesus also be in us what defile it man it is not what goes inside it is not what you eat it is not what you drink and I please don't get me wrong no when I say it's not what you drink because some people take it and say well you hear what the preacher says if I drink alcohol it does not defile me but the Bible says my friends too much of one thing oh hallelujah is not good for us so my brothers and sisters I want to tell you that glory be to God what Jesus is saying here is that if we we mess around with the commandments of God if we mess around with traditions then we are going to be going the wrong way we are going to be going away from what God wants us to practice from what God wants us to put into action from what God wants us oh glory be to God to do oh glory be to God we will be defiling ourselves oh glory be to God oh hallelujah I want to look at it another time it says here in the verse 4 for God commanded saying honor your mother and your father and he cursed your mother and your father hallelujah so what God is saying is that the traditions oh glory be to God Almighty came against the word of God this was just an example to them God Jesus said I say to you honor your mother and your father oh glory be to God look at it in the world today you find where children oh glory be to God I don't even want to go to children you find we are adults. They do not honor their mothers and their fathers anymore. Oh, glory be to God Almighty. Some of us, oh, glory be to God, we have our mothers and our fathers and they have become of age. We do not take care of them anymore. We put them to the side. We are just waiting for them to die. Oh, how glory be to God to inherit the land and to inherit the house and to inherit the bank account. We are not honoring our fathers and our mothers anymore. Oh, glory be to God. Some of us, Oh, hallelujah, we have, hallelujah, aunts that are widows. We have uncles that are widowers, and we are not taking care of them. We are not honoring our mothers and our fathers. Can I come back into the church? Oh, glory be to God, we are talking about what defiles a man. We are not honoring our, hallelujah, our church mothers and our church fathers anymore. Many of us as young people, as young, hallelujah, young individuals coming up, we don't honor the elders anymore. Oh, glory be to God, we just want to do our own own thing they cannot speak to us anymore I'm talking out of experience but one thing I remember from my grandfather the same grandfather he used to tell me he says son I can tell you one thing he says manners can take you through the world oh glory be to God Almighty said what do you mean by that he says you cannot oh glory be to God 
go through the world without having manners. Manners means honor. It means that you honor them. I remember going to school. Oh, glory be to God, in those days we used to have to take the bus to school. And so, my friends, when an older person comes on the bus, any time I see them, I would get up. Sometimes my friends, hallelujah, would say to me, why are you getting up? I said, my grandfather says, oh, glory be to God, that manners carry you through the world. And I believe him with all my heart. I believe that those are, hallelujah, some of the blessings that I am living off now. Those are some of the investments that I made in life. I did not defile myself. Oh, hallelujah, but I honored them. And so, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you're wondering, why is it that God loved me so much? David, my friends, oh, glory be to God, had a time of his, in his life when David was running day and night. He ran from his children. He ran from his enemies. He ran from his frenemies. But one upon, once upon a time, David came to the point, my brothers and sisters, oh, glory be to God. When it looked, oh glory be to God, like nothing was going to happen for him. David ran to the house of the Lord. David prostrate before God. He said, God, why do you love me so much? My God, am I talking to somebody out there? What defileth a man? Well, my friends, it is the things that we do in this body. Oh glory be to God, it is the things that we do in this little thing called a heart. Oh glory be to God, let me go down to the scriptures because I'm almost finished with this discourse. What defiles a man is not what goes in, but is what comes out. And what comes out, the Bible is going to tell us what comes out. Let me read for you. Hallelujah. In the verse 7 of Matthew chapter 15, Jesus says, ye hypocrites. Oh, glory be to God. Well, did, well, didn't Isaiah the prophet say about you? He says that you people, you draw nigh unto me with your mouth. Oh, glory be to God. Traditions will only cause you to be drawn to God by, by your mouth. It means that you have a form of godliness. You have defiled yourself, but deny the power thereof. And God is saying to us, stop doing lip service. Stop doing mouth service. I am what? Watching some things, my brothers and sisters, around me, where you can see some people, they really, really, they are nowhere with God. But when they stand up in front of you, they have words and intellect that they can use. And so when people hear them open their mouth, they begin to say, Oh, yes, that person is anointed. But let me tell you, anointing comes with discipline, anointing comes with following the commandments of God. So whatever God says, you will do. The Bible says, If you love me, you will do my commandments. Oh, glory be to God. So you see, sometimes when I look at some people and I hear other people, oh, this person is so anointed. I look at the person's attitude. I look at the person's aptitude. I look at the person's relationship with God. And then I line it up with the anointing because the anointing, my friends, breaks every yoke. No yoke of bondage can be in your life. Glory be to God. If you are not defiled, oh, hallelujah. And I'm not judging anyone, but I'm looking at the word of God. The word of God says to us that there are many, oh glory be to God, who draw nigh with their mouth. It means that they have a lot of words. They can talk a lot of things. When they talk, it sounds as if they have put everything together. But when you look at their lives, when you look at the way they live with others, am I going to talk to somebody out there what defiles you? Is how you live with others. Some of you, hallelujah, you are work, work working with other people and they have nothing good to say about you as a Christian. Oh, glory be to God. That is a defilement of your hallelujah salvation. Oh, glory be to God. And sometimes, my friends, you'd want to say people don't like you or people don't love you. But look at the way how you treat people. I'm talking about you. Yes, you that are looking at me. Oh, glory be to God. If you're a supervisor and nobody likes you, oh, glory be to God, something is wrong. And I'm not saying, oh, glory be to God, that people will not dislike you because of the fact that they stand up for God but that that's the part where the Bible tells us that if you are persecuted for my name's sake then you are blessed but if it is not because of my name's sake if it is because every minute you write people up if it is because every minute hallelujah you 
You put somebody's name, oh glory be to God, on a report. If it is something by which, my brothers and sisters, you are a Christian and nobody has anything good to say about you, whether Christians or non-Christians, then you have defiled yourself, oh glory be to God, and you're only doing mouth service. Then there are others who honor God with their lips. Oh glory be to God Almighty, they call it lip service. And so they are also called one day Christians. Christians. Oh, hallelujah. The song of the six days a week, they're doing all sorts of wrong. Oh, glory be to God. But on their day of worship, they dress up in their white. They dress up in their suits and their hats and Bible in hand. Oh, hallelujah. The song says, you are a one day Christian and you have defiled yourself as a man or as a woman. Oh, glory be to God. I am coming down to a close. Oh, glory be to God. But it says in the verse nine, but in vain they do worship me so God is not accepting your worship when you are defiled are you checking your thermometer are you checking your system are you checking how you are living have you defiled yourself are you like this are you like the scribes and the Pharisees who are looking at traditions who are walking in traditions who are causing traditions to make you hallelujah placed outside of God's protection Outside of God's provision, are you such a one? What is what defileth a man? Oh, glory be to God, I'm coming down to it. I'm coming down to a close. I need to get you to understand that there are some things that defile a man. But I love this part. This part is the conclusion of the matter. We have talked about the fact that if you treat others, hallelujah, wrongfully, or if you are, hallelujah, in a position where you're oppressing others, then you have already been defiled. Oh, glory be to God. But the Bible says... It says here that Jesus said that they use the commandments. Oh, glory be to God of men. So let's stop there. The commandments of men. I'm going to talk to some of you. Uh, yes, you're looking at me. I'm going to talk to some of you. You know that there are some individuals who are in higher authority and they're oppressing others. And you stand up and you don't do anything about it. You don't say anything about it. There's one thing that I learned from an old preacher. He says for evil has Hallelujah. To prevail, good men keep silent. And some of you, you are in positions of influence whereby you can say to those in authority, no, this is wrong. If it is evil, if they have to, hallelujah, come down on you. But speak the truth and speak it ever. Cause it what it will. For he who hides the wrong he does, does the wrong thing still. In the court, they say, if you know, hallelujah, that someone is doing wrong and you do not tell them that they are doing wrong and you're in their in their in their surroundings or you're in their presence then they call you an accomplice my god i feel god oh hallelujah some of you have defiled yourselves because you have become a accomplice oh glory be to god to oppressing some of god's people you know that some individuals are doing wrong they are treating others bad oh glory be to god and you don't say anything oh glory be to god the bible says for evil to prevail good men hallelujah will keep silent will you continue to keep silent will you continue to follow the commands of God commands of men and not the commands of God God is saying to us stop defiling yourself come out from among them be ye separated oh glory be to God I feel the presence of God as I close oh glory be to God I look at my God Almighty the verse chapter 11 the verse 11 coming down to verse 13 listen to what it says it it says, and he called the multitudes. He did not just call the, sad, the, the Pharisees and the scribes. He did not just call the disciples, but he called the multitudes because Jesus had to clarify some things. What defileth a man? Jesus said, oh, glory be to God. He says to them, hear this and understand. Not that which goes into the mouth of a man defileth him, but hallelujah, that which comes out of the mouth that defileth the man. Oh, glory be to God. So some of us, oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah, the Bible says, we have some tongue. My God, I feel God in this place. Holy Spirit, minister through this, oh, hallelujah, this system right now. We, feel, we have some people. Your tongue.
tongue is like fire. Oh, hallelujah, you have taken your tongue and you have crucified some people. You have taken your tongue and wrapped them around the neck. You have placed them on a cross. You have nailed them on the cross with your tongue. You have spoken bad things about good people. Oh, glory be to God, that is what defiles you. Oh, glory be to God, it is not what you eat. It is not the meat that you eat. It is not the things that you drink. But it's hallelujah, it's what comes out of your mouth. But one thing I want you to understand, my friends, oh, glory be to God Almighty, that whatever comes out of your mouth, hallelujah, comes directly from the heart. Let me read for you why I say that. It says here, in the verse 12, it says, Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees sees sees were offended after they have heard this but Jesus answered again oh hallelujah sometimes you know my friends we need to look at some times when Jesus when the Bible says and Jesus answered when Jesus answers my friends something is coming up it is something for learning it is something to carry on it is something for us to take hallelujah down the road this is not tradition but this is a commandment when Jesus answers in the verse glory be to God in the verse 13 it says and he answered and said every plant which the heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up it says let alone them that that are blind hallelujah lead the blind and continue to lead them oh glory be to God then he answered Peter and said unto him hallelujah are ye yet without understanding do ye not understand that whatsoever enters the mouth goes into the belly and comes out to the throat oh glory be to God he says it comes out as a draft but it says those things which proceeded out of the mouth comes from the heart let me say it again those things which come out of the mouth they proceed from the heart and that is which defiles a man so therefore my friends glory be to God you see some individuals Oh, glory be to God Almighty. And people are putting them up on pedestal. And people are putting them in positions. And people are saying to them, Oh, glory be to God, this person is a nice person. Oh, glory be to God. Because they can do stuff for you. Or because they can put you somewhere. Or because they can sign a paper for you. But God is saying to us, my brothers and sisters, these are the things that defile a man. The things that come out of his mouth. Oh, glory be to God. So sometimes you hear some people and they say things about others. Sometimes people are innocent. Oh, glory be to God. Father, I pray for justice for the innocent. Oh, glory be to God because some people are innocent. But because people are in high influential positions, they can say and do what they want and get away with it on earth. But one thing I can tell you, my friends, they are not getting away with it in heaven. God is keeping a record. So when you go before him, he's going to say on the 31st of this month of this year when you said this when that came out of your mouth oh glory be to God when you lied on the brother and you lied on the sister oh glory be to God when you could have said something good and you know that good was in there but you said something bad when the evil hallelujah oh glory be to God came out of your mouth oh glory be to God when you kept silent oh glory be to God when you know you could have said something to save a brother's life to save a brother's ministry to save a oh hallelujah to save somebody from shame and disgrace but you did not say anything that is evil oh glory be to God that is what defile you what comes out of your heart oh glory be to God the Bible says finally my friends in Matthew chapter 15 it says but those things which proceeded out of the mouth comes from the heart oh hallelujah and it defiles a man for out of the heart proceeded what evil thoughts I'm saying again out of the heart the heart that God gave you that should have been producing love out of it proceeded evil thoughts hallelujah murder adulterers fornication thefts false witness blasphemy these are the things which defile a man but you eat the unwashed hands with unwashed hands it does not defile a man glory be to God what a word on the word channel 345 so God is saying oh glory be to God if your heart contains evil thoughts it contains murder it contains adultery adulterous 
um, thoughts, fornicative thoughts, theft, oh glory be to God, false witness, blasphemy, all of these things can be placed in a whole new story, in a whole new message, in a whole new thing for you to hear about. But what I want to take it for is what it is. God says, Jesus said it. He said it's not what you put into your body that defiles you. But glory be to God, some of us, our hearts are filled with murder. Our hearts are filled with evil thoughts. Our hearts are filled with adulterous thoughts. We're not talking about just adultery as in someone else's partner. We're talking about thinking about other things that would be in the place of God. We're talking about my God. We're talking about things, my friends, that would put all glory be to God. What God wants to happen in your heart. Oh, hallelujah, to be put aside. Your vessel cannot hold anything more. You cannot pour new wine. Oh, hallelujah, into the old vessel. You have to wash it out. You have to make it clean again. So today we are saying, oh, glory be to God, your vessel might be dirty. Oh, glory be to God, you're, you might be a defiled man, but there is hope for you. Oh, glory be to God, Jesus' blood can wash you white as snow. Jesus' blood can wash out your vessel. Oh, that red crimson blood can make you white as snow. Therefore, I am presenting to you the blood of Jesus Christ that you need to put onto, oh hallelujah, your vessel. You need to put it over yourself to wash you, to cleanse you from your def defiling uh, attitude, your defiled member. Oh glory be to God and make you whole again. Oh glory be to God, I present to you the potter's wheel. Oh glory be to God, whereby I wanted to run to the potter's house. His hands of mercy. The song has lifted me. Oh, glory be to God. It says that the potter puts us on. Oh, glory be to God. His wheel. Oh, hallelujah. And melt us down and begin to mold us. Is there somebody who wants God to mold them from your defiled state? Oh, glory to God. That defiled heart. Do you want God to change that heart? Well, you have to submit everything to him. You have to decide your mind. You have to say to yourself, I know that I know that I know that there are some thoughts in me. I know that I know to God Almighty that there are some adulterous attitudes in me. I know from earth to heaven that I have defiled my garment because of thievery and because of false witness and because of blasphemy and because of evil thoughts. You have to confess them. You have to give your vessel to God and let him wash you. Let him make you over again. The writer says, make me over again, O Lord. Make me over again. Father, I thank you right now. As I pray, oh God Almighty, I pray for myself because my friends, let me tell you something. Oh glory be to God, none of us hallelujah, no glory be to God Almighty. Sometimes we are in the position where we are defiled by just a very thought. Hallelujah, I'm saying to you I am not, hallelujah outside of that. Anything can happen in my life. Oh, glory be to God. So I want to be like Brother Job. Oh, hallelujah. I want to be like Brother Job that says, oh, glory be to God. Despite the fact that I just finished praying, I want to pray again. Lord Jesus, I present myself to you first, God. The person who, oh, God Almighty, is bringing the undiluted gospel. Oh, God Almighty, to the nations, to the world, to the world wide web. Lord, wash me and clean Cleanse me one more time in your precious blood. One writer says, Lord, wash me in hyssop. Purge me one more time. Make me white as snow now, God. The Lord God Almighty, as I present others to you, I am clean. I am a clean vessel. I am a holy vessel. I am, God Almighty, I'm not a broken cistern, but I'm a vessel that has been molded, melted, oh God, and fashioned for you. The Lord, as you pour into me, God Almighty, oh, hallelujah that God the anointing will flow. So the God Almighty, I pray right now that God as you just touch me. Lord, touch somebody out there. They might feel, oh God Almighty, as if their vessel is too dirty. They might feel that like their heart is too unclean. But Lord, nothing is impossible for you. No one is too far from you that you cannot touch. Lord, I pray that as I stretch my hand towards the screen right now, you will touch somebody, God Almighty, who is in a condition. Oh God Almighty, they feel filthy and dirty. They might have just done something wrong, God. But Lord, I know that God Almighty, that you, God, will stop by anyone.
on. You will stop by anywhere. Once we cry out to you, oh God Almighty, as I look back in the word, in my prayer, oh glory be to God, it says, oh hallelujah, that there are some, oh glory be to God Almighty, who, oh hallelujah, does do lip service or just or just God Almighty come close draw nigh to you with only their mouth but Father we want to draw nigh to you with our hearts and we want to have a clean heart and a pure we want to have a pure heart and a clean hand we do not want to lift up our soul unto vanity nor soon nor so deceitfully but our delight must be in the law of the Lord hallelujah your commandments and in your commandments and your law do we want to meditate day and night so Father I I pray that you will draw us near to you and God Almighty that you will accept us God cleanse us and wash us Lord that you can oh God use us for your service to bring glory and honor to your name Father we thank you right now for this healing oh hallelujah for someone who has been defiled someone who has been living a defiled life someone who has gotten a life that has been turned around God by this word today Father I just thank you right now for healing for blessing for touching oh God for bringing someone oh God Almighty from darkness to the marvelous light in Jesus' name. And we all say, hallelujah. We all say, amen, amen, and amen. My brothers and sisters, what a word on the word channel 345. Glory be to God in the highest. My brothers and sisters, with that I want to say to you, thank you one more time for choosing the word channel 345. It is indeed, my brothers and sisters, the blessings of the Lord and the glory of God that we want to be seen in our lives. Therefore, we want to say, Lord, Help us that God, if we recognize that we have been defiled, if we recognize that God Almighty, we have messed up, Lord, help us to confess, oh, glory be to God, and turn it over to you, Jesus, because only you can do it. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you one more time. We want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, those of you in the world, for choosing the word channel 345. One more time, as I've always said, come back to us next week. Same time, same place, right here on the Word Channel 345. God bless you and take care of yourselves until we see each other again. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful time. God bless.